So what is the OAuth client credentials flow and why is it useful? So let's quickly recall what OAuth does. So with OAuth, we have these two use cases, right? First use case, I want to give a third-party application like diagrams.net limited access to an API, for example, to my Google Drive, so it can upload like a file. So it's doing it on behalf of a user, on behalf of a natural person. And the second use case is that you want some third-party application to access an API on behalf of itself. So more like a service account, something that runs in the background. So for the first thing, I already mentioned the example, right? Diagrams.net. If I click save here, you can see it's loading and now it's actually uploading to my Google Drive. And here, the application is not accessing it on behalf of a natural person, but it's accessing it on behalf of itself. So for example, say you use Terraform as a tool. So Terraform is an infrastructure as code tool that allows you to dynamically spin up like virtual machines and to manage clusters and so on. So you make a commit, Terraform sees, ah, okay, there's a couple of changes and then it applies these changes to your cloud platform. Super nice, you click one button or you have one command and you can spin up like an entire cluster with it. Uh, very handy. But this is a third party application and the question now is how do you get like access to the Google Cloud without giving it like your credentials so that it can, you know, read out your credit card or something like that. And the idea here is that since this is a confidential client, so since we're talking about machine to machine communication, um, they can keep a secret. So what you will get here is you will get a client ID and you will get a client secret. Remember, you only get the client secret for confidential clients, so for servers, something like where it's not exposed. So for single page applications or for mobile devices, if you recall uh, like the previous videos, you would not get uh, any of these. So now you have a client ID and a client secret. And what you just do is you just send this to the authorization server via HTTPS, of course. So everything in OAuth is supposed to be HTTPS. And um, then you get back like an access token. Typically, you don't get back in a refresh token simply because there's just no need, right? I mean, you can just make another request. So there's no need for you to store like a refresh token because there's no user that would be annoyed in asking for it. And if you always have to request a token, then it's also e or better in terms of security because technically speaking, you could lock this application out more uh, in, a, in an easier way. Yeah, so it's like the simplest flow. You have the client ID, you have the client secret, you send it to the authorization server, you get it back, and then you can go and make API requests. Yeah, so that's the client credential flow in a nutshell. Um, let me know what you think about this. Let me know whether the explanation was clear. If you have a question, just leave me a comment. You can also reach out to me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Production Coder. So thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.